Okay, so this video is again on the topic of RNA interference, but specifically we'll be talking about another molecule that actually leads to genetic silencing, which is called an shRNA, or better known as short hairpin RNA. And what this is useful is, is for um, research in that it is good for long-term expressing of siRNAs, which will eventually go and cleave the mRNAs. So what you can say is this is long-term expressing siRNAs. If you guys don't know what siRNA is, SIRNA, please watch the previous video as it will explain it. So this video is really a second part to the previous video. So what this does is that, suppose you want to develop something that goes into a cell, right? Suppose this is a bacterial cell, E. coli bacterial cell. E. coli bacterial cell. And then as you know, E. coli use these certain plasmids. What plasmids are, are basically extra genetic material the bacteria doesn't really need, but in times of need, when the environment changes, the plasmid can actually go through um, and the can actually go into like the genetic area of the E. coli cell and be transcribed and translated into proteins. So what researchers do is that they, they really modify these plasmids. So if you can modify plasmids, you can modify the genetic material of the E. coli since E. coli use plasmids. So suppose we want to in interject an siRNA into the bacteria. How, how will this be done? Well, first, you will make, as I said, a plasmid, right? And let's just do a specific plasmid. This is just plasmid construction. As you know, for transcription, you obviously need a promoter, which promotes the polymerase to come. So we'll just say promoter. And this will be just an artificial nucleotide region that will code for a specific shRNA. I'll explain this later. If you just continue watching the video, this will make much more sense at the end. So just follow with me. You have a promoter that codes for this short hairpin RNA, which is used for expressing long-term siRNA. So you know, so um, then you'll have the poly A tail. And this is just because um, RNA molecules usually have poly A tails at the end. So suppose you have this plasmid that you're making, right? So uh, polymerase will come in, it will transcribe everything. And we specifically want this SI shRNA. Suppose this is what's gonna, what's gonna um, cleave a protein that codes for eye color. So to follow through with the previous video, eye color. So we want to suppress an eye color protein. Okay, so this will just code for, and these shRNA molecules actually look like hairpins. So you have complementary base pairing, but then you have this loop here. Okay, so we want to know how this how this shRNA processes into siRNAs. Well, the first thing that we know that these plasmids, so this is actually located on here. So if we just mark this A, then mark this B, just mark this A and mark this B. So this thing is lies between A and B. So whatever cell will actually interject this into, let's say this is the nucleus. So a plasmid will just come into the nucleus and it will be transcribed, as you know, um, by polymerases. And then in the nucleus you have just this molecule that we were talking about, this shRNA molecule. And then when, when it's in the nucleus, you need to have a protein exporter. Or, sorry, not a protein exporter, just uh, an exporter that exports this shRNA. This is not a protein, sorry. So this exporter is just called an exp5 just a random term 
So once this crosses into the cytoplasm, we still have shRNA, it can actually go through dicer. Remember the dicer that we were talking about in a couple videos prior that cleaves ribonucleases, that cleaves the S, that cleaves the dsRNA into the siRNA? It uses that dicer to make siRNA. And this siRNA can eventually interact with the Rusk protein that we were talking about, and it can just cleave cleave the um, eye color protein or whatever protein you want to, or sorry, the eye color mRNA, and stop the eye color protein from being made. So just to review, uh, suppose this is basically researchers making the specific um, plasmid. You have it follows every genetic machinery that the cell follows. It gets placed in the plasmid, it can go into the nucleus, get transcribed into these shRNA molecules, which get transported by exporter phi, and then, and then it gets cleaved by dicer to make siRNAs. So the reason that this is beneficial, beneficent is that it's long-term, long-term use. So the cells will just have this plasmid lying around, so it can, it can transcribe more, it can, the polymerase can come and make much more shRNAs, which get cleaved into... Um, siRNAs. So this is why this is really long-term siRNAs. So SH makes, gets to siRNA, that's why.